Hi, I'm Matt Marshall. I'm founder and editor-in-chief of VentureBeat. We're here live from GTC 2024, talking with Deepu Tala, VP and GM of Robotics and Edge Computing at NVIDIA. So Deepu, welcome. Matt, thanks for having me. You're at the center of a lot of excitement right now, right now robotics and AI. Can, can you talk a little bit about why that's so exciting right now? Yeah, I mean, there's simultaneously two things have happened in the last six months to a year. Number one, as we all know, is generative AI. The cool thing about generative AI is the fact that the models that are coming out of it, the so-called foundation models, are generalizing rather well. And that's perfect for robotics applications. And the second thing that happened, the last 10 years, we've been working on this technology called Omniverse for creating digital twins. And a lot of things that we've been working on have finally come together. So now we have a perfect scenario where we have generative AI and a com combining it with uh, Omniverse for digital twins, we're able to simulate a lot of these robots in simulation. And as a result, we can speed up the testing and training of these robots. You mentioned generalizing very well. Can you talk a little bit about like, what, what specifically are you referring to? What areas are generalizing very well? Yeah, for example, in the past, when we used to do AI, deep learning, convolution, neural network-based things, you would train it on a specific thing, like pick something, or, or, or identify certain objects, right? It's a people, or animals, or something like that, or yeah. a specific pose. Now, we're able to use one model that is able to do almost all of those things. And so that way we don't have to train for one specific thing, but it can rather generalize well. Okay, now let's, let's move to the big announcement from Jensen a couple of days ago. He, he announced Groot, which was this new robotics platform. Can you talk a little bit about its capabilities and how it's differentiated? Sure, absolutely. Yeah. So there's multiple parts to this. Mm -hmm. Number one, we think it's time for creating a general foundation model for robotics. Just like Chad GPT is for what it did for the IT world and the general purpose industry, how about we try to create something for robotics that can operate in a fairly general manner. So it's a foundation model that as input, you can give it text or speech, but you can also give it video as input or even live demonstration, we could put it in Omniverse, for example, and virtually tunnel in, right? And then, we train this foundation model on large amounts of data, both from the internet obviously, and but also from demonstration, and out comes a series of actions that the robot does. So that's the foundation model. And then, to run that, we need a great computer, of course, right? Because yeah. it has to be running in real time right. at reasonably low power, and so we announced Jetson Thor, which is the follow-on version to the most popular Jetson Orin that we have, which has right. been adopted pretty much by every robotics company. Over 6,000 companies are using Orin right now. Okay. Over 1.3 million developers on Orin. Thor takes it to the next level. It has eight times higher performance for transformers, which, as you know, is the engine for generative AI. And we also increase the I.O. bandwidth by 10 times because humanoids need a lot of these sensors. Great, uh, that, that's, that's intriguing. So you, until now, I think you've had some other competing platforms. You have the big cloud providers that all have a play, right? Amazon, uh, you know, Google, and Microsoft, and they're all actually in the foundation business in one way or another, right? In terms of foundation models. Um, can, can you talk a little bit about how specifically you're differentiated in terms of connecting the dots here, the foundation model, the robotics platform? Absolutely. So if you think about everything that's happening in the data center, which is where most companies are working, yeah. there's a big computer, yeah. and that's used for training and inferencing or the running of the model. But the robotics problem is a three computer problem as it turns out. You still have the training and creation of the AI model in the data center, and then you have the runtime computer that's in the robot, that's Jetson, and then there's something in the middle for simulating all of this in a digital twin. We call that Omniverse OVX. Gotcha. So it's now become a three computer problem, and we are providing the computing stack across all these three computers. So providing the tools for robotics companies that need acceleration at the runtime, they need tools for simulating both reinforcement learning and synthetic data generation and all the simulation in yeah. Omniverse, and then of course, training the big models, foundation models on a DGX in the data center. Gotcha, yeah, I, I, mean, I think you could argue that you have differentiation in all those three levels, but would, I, I, I would think probably on the simulation side, when you're comparing to those big providers, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, you know, there's the simulation, but also how it's all tied together, right? Would you agree that that's probably where your differentiation yeah, is? Yeah, so it's we're differentiated, exactly. So all the three computers coming together, but at the same time, look, we partner, we are an open platform. 
we partner with each of these companies. For example, Amazon Robotics is a big partner of ours. They're using our simulation omniverse environment for sim simulating their warehouses. And then the runtime Proteus robots use our, our computing systems as well. So we partnered with everybody in the industry. So, so, so Jensen, announced, uh, demonstrated some robots on stage, uh, you know, introduced the, the Disney robots and had some other robots behind him. Can you talk specifically, you've talked you know, about the platform, but what are the applications that are coming and when will they yeah. be deployed? Yeah, I think broadly we think of robotics like you know, three different use cases. One, take things and move them around from point A to point B. Things like warehouses. in warehouses and logistics, exactly. So those are AMRs, right? The second one is all these industrial arms that are doing manipulation, gripping, and you know, moving boxes. They're, the robots are relatively stationary, but they're moving things around, right? And the third, which is a new form factor that everybody's excited about, is the humanoid form factor. So this GTC, we announced updates to each of those areas. For Isaac AMR, we've created this tool with this SDK called Isaac Perceptor that provides 3D surround vision. So now you can operate the AMRs in unstructured environments. For Isaac Manipulator, we created a series of accelerated libraries and foundation models like foundation pose and grasp, and also what is the right trajectory, the motion, we call it co-motion, for where the robot should move. And then for, of course, for the humanoid platform, we announced the uh, project Groot, foundation model and the computer. Yeah, Deepu, uh, there, there was there was, a, it was an interesting uh, demonstration of the, the, the Disney robots. I, I think Jensen, you know, was flawless in, in his presentation. He, he he was really killing it, according to, to 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 most observations. But there was a time when he turned around and asked for the the green robot to to approach, but the green robot didn't. Do, do you know what happened there? Well, I'm guessing that didn't have all the generative AI done general purpose foundation model implemented yet. Yeah. So it's actually pretty cute that you know it it, it doesn't have it. But soon, hopefully, we know when the general purpose foundation models are ready, you can be much more interactive than the way they were yesterday. Yeah, Deepu, uh, anything else you're excited about uh, going forward from, from what's coming out of this? No, I think just the fact that these two things, generative AI and digital wind technology, have exactly lined up at the right time. I think in the next 10 years, we'll see such a massive trajectory in how fast robotics is going to take off compared to the last 10 years. Um, I think we're going to really see all of these uh, robots come to, you know, Short, labor shortages and all the other issues that we have, they can really come and help the uh, humanity. Okay, Deepu, congratulations. Hope you get some rest after this, but uh, we'll be interested in following your journey going Absolutely. forward. Absolutely, yeah, great talking to you, Mark. Guests, thank you for watching and be sure to explore more sessions in the GTC catalog, thank you.